Hello students, welcome to ePathshala. I am Prerna Trehan and I am an assistant professor at GGDST College, Punjab University, Chandigarh. We have realized that the study of political theory has led to the study of numerous approaches and schools of thought. In today's module, we shall be uncovering another approach to the study of political theory, which is feminism. In the study of political theory, we realize that there remain various contested domains when we study the idea of both the political as well as theoretical. In its movement towards particularism, subjectivity, as well as anti-foundationalism, feminist approach has become highly relevant to the study of political theory. Feminism and the feminist approach needs to be seen not as a monolithic structure, but in fact comprising of numerous feminisms. The first idea that needs to be uncovered is why is feminism relevant to the study of political theory. Firstly, feminist theorists believe that there has been a lack of gender diversity in the issues studied within the realms of political theory. Most issues revolve around masculine issues and have a certain male biasness. Similarly, most of the scholarship on these issues has also been male-led. Thus, this idea of being male-streamed has to be questioned within the realms of political theory. Next, what feminists try to uncover is the notion of sex and gender. Feminists try to break down and deconstruct both these concepts of sex and gender and make them more complex as well as interesting. Lastly, it is also important to realize that the feminist approach of feminism is not about male bashing. Rather, it revolves around the idea of promotion of gender equality and bringing into the fold numerous voices that have been erstwhile marginalized in the study of political theory. In the coming up module, we shall first try to come up with a definition of feminism if the same is possible. Next, we shall always also be looking at the various ideological sub-schools within the feminist approach. Therefore, we shall look at classical or liberal feminism. We shall also be looking at Marxist feminism, radical feminism, ecofeminism, and so on and so forth. Next, we also try to look at the temporal division within the feminist approach. Therefore, we have the first wave of, wave of feminism, which may revolve around certain liberal ideas. Next, we have the second wave of feminism. Following that, we have the third wave of feminism. Finally, we also have the advent of post-feminism, which is different from all these three preceding waves of feminist thought. Lastly, in the module, we'll try to uncover why feminism is so relevant to the study of political theory and what is it that it brings to the table when we study politics and political theory in the realm of political science. The feminist approach we see brings into fold numerous ideological schools as well as various approaches to the study of social sciences. The module shall try to pay attention to all these schools of thought and uncover the diverse meaning within political theory as explored by the feminist approach. The objectives of this module is a broad overview of feminist approaches and traditions in the political theory. Jane Mansbridge and Susan Moller Okin refer to feminism as a political stance and not a systematic theory, inextricably linked with political change. Another characteristic of feminist theory they cite is its experiential plurality, the challenge to public-private dichotomy when feminism politicizes the personal, the standpoints of women belonging to different cultures, sexualities, etc makes feminist theory rich with diversity and plurality. Yet, like many feminist theorists, Mansbridge and Okin identify a larger overarching goal for feminist theory. This goal, throughout its plurality, feminism has one obvious, simple and overarching goal, that is, to end men's systematic domination of women. Feminist theory also has one overarching goal, to understand, explain and challenge that domination in order to help end it. Feminism therefore is enriched with different viewpoints, standpoints and epistemologies that also reflect multiplicity of feminist ontologies. It will be more judicious to use feminisms in place of feminism in the current circumstances. 
An early classification of feminism was given by Alison Jagger. Liberal feminism, Marxist feminism, socialist feminism and radical feminism. While liberal feminism applies the liberal notions of equality, equal rights, liberty and the idea of a neutral state for the cause of women's liberation, Marxist feminists relied especially on classical Marxism's accusation of private property as the root cause of women's subordination as reflected in Engels' origin of family, state and private property. Radical feminism often claims to be the unmodified feminism not wedded to any other political ideology that brings gender and patriarchy to the center of its analysis. Radical feminism perceives patriarchy as a totality permeating every institution and space and as a universal category. Patriarchy here is a structure that renders women's agency meaningless. For example, McKinnon argues that women's engagement in heterosexual sex never manifests true consent or agency in patriarchy. Therefore, the right question to ask is not if women have the agency to have sex. On the other, on the other hand, women's right to refuse sex is the real mark of agency in the current patriarchal system founded on sexual subordination of women. Socialist feminists tried to combine capitalism and patriarchy as the twin pillars of women's oppression. They thus engage with issues of production as well as reproduction. In course of time, we hear of different strands of feminism, psychoanalytic feminism, cultural feminism, ecofeminism, lesbian feminism, Islamic feminism, third world feminism, relational feminism, etc. Hackett and Haslanger speak of three variants, sameness feminism, different feminism and dominance feminism. Sameness feminism is based on articulation of women's rights and liberties based on a common or same humanity as men, which could lead to a negation of sexual difference, while difference feminism affirms biological and social differences of women, for example connection or care feminism. Ruddick's maternal peace and Carol Gilligan's moral reasoning and ethics of care are examples of the same. Dominance approach perceives sexual difference itself as an effect, a product of domination. It thus condemns the non-equivalence of differences attributed to men and women. As Kim Licker puts it, and I quote, whereas the difference approach says that sex inequality is only justified if there are real differences between men and women, the dominance approach says that sex differences that is real or imagined must never be used as a source of or justification for inequality and male domination, end quote. Judith Squires makes a threefold classification, feminisms which are based on equality, difference and displacement of differences. Dominance and displacement approaches therefore also call for a redefinition of male and female roles rather than a mere equality of opportunity. Feminists like Elizabeth Gross therefore claim that feminist theory and politics is not about equality but about autonomy. Another way of classifying feminism is by a timeline, first wave, second wave, third wave and post-feminism. Broadly, first wave feminism stood for equality for women and men. Second wave represented the radical feminist movement that essentialized a universal category of women and the victimhood of women. Janice McLaughlin underscores the feminist contribution to thought as such. She goes on to say, An important target in each wave was highlighting the inability of established social and political thought to respond to the oppression of women. Feminist thought has always sought to engage with and reinterpret the foundations of the theoretical frameworks it coexists with and at times draws from. A basic task of feminist approach to political theory is the attack on male dominance and the maleness of mainstream theories. Feminism attacks almost every political tradition, especially liberalism and Marxism for the gender bias internal to these theories whose fundamental proposition is equality of all human beings. A dominant way in which this was pursued is by challenging the dichotomy between the public and the private. Mainstream political theory, including Rawls' theory of justice, mainly addressed the status of individuals in the public realm, ignoring the power dynamics in the private. 
Paterman, for example, throws light on how social contract theories, including Rawls, is primarily a contract between men or male-headed families that are treated as natural or biologically determined. The contract, therefore, does not include the sexual contract within families that is unequal. Oaken similarly contends that Rawls' social contract behind the veil of ignorance is genderless, but the rules of justice do not apply to the private realm, for the family's sentimental ties are deemed by mainstream theorists as incompatible with the traits of public life. Eva Kete further points out how Rawls ignores the care functions performed by women in the family. Thus, while early liberals like Mill explicitly denied application of justice to sexual division of labor in the family, contemporary liberals like Rawls implicitly assume the naturalness of this division of labor. Liberalism by and large neglected family and accepted the uh, division of public and private spheres. Equality is mainly a matter for liberals and to a large extent for liberal feminism in the public domain. Family and private therefore maintain an important axis of sexual inequality, prompting Pateman to argue that feminism is all about the private-public binary. The same subversive role of feminist theory can be seen in postmodern feminism and other representatives of third wave like black feminism. For example, Luz Irigre responds to uh, logocentricism by exposing the phallocentricism, male closure in language. Irigre's a la parla femme, that is women's speech, and Sisu's écriture féminine, that is women's writings, are examples of feminist subversion to problematize linguistic patriarchy. This demonstrates the difficulty in systemizing feminism into one approach or epistemology. As Kimlika notes, the issue of diversity is multiplied in the case of feminism since almost every other theory is represented within feminism. Feminism also interacted with different historical traditions and has interacted and overlapped with different ideologies. Also, feminism lacks definitional consensus ranging from the focus on improving women's position to sexual justice to removal of systematic discrimination to postmodernists who problematize the idea of a definition itself. Notwithstanding the wide diversities and contradictions within feminism, feminist political theory raises three central questions. Firstly, how did male domination arise? Second, why was it so widely accepted? And finally, what are its consequences? In doing so, feminist political theory is subversive in nature. From the early feminists who tried to distinguish biological sex from a socially and culturally constructed category of gender, to feminist postmodernists who complicate sex-gender distinction with the argument that perhaps sex was always gender. From radical feminists who believe in the universal victimhood of women, to black feminists and Islamic feminists who bring forth the notion of interlocking and multiple oppressions, feminism destabilizes accepted categories in political theory including rationality, agency and human subjectivity. Let us now try to summarize whatever we have learned throughout the module. We realize that the study of the feminist approach to political theory is not one single or monolithic thought. In fact, it is comprised of numerous forms of feminisms. It is important to draw linkages within these various ideological schools of thought within feminism as well as the temporal division. For example, if we look at the first wave feminism we can often link it to the idea of liberal feminism, which espoused the ideas of legal rights as well as the idea of sameness between man and woman. Theorists such as Mary Wollstonecraft try to emphasize on the fact that both men and women are humans and therefore by that virtue of humanity should enjoy similar political as well as legal rights. This formed the basis of both liberal school of feminism as well as the first wave of feminism. However, over time we realized that this idea of sameness was again privileging the idea of male or the masculine. Therefore, moving on from the 1960s to the 1970s, we realized that the second wave of feminism has brought about a different kind of change. 
Therefore, certain notions of radical feminism came to be included within this idea. Thus, we had a stress more on the idea of differences between man and woman. However, these differences were not to be used as justification for the inequality. Scholars like Sarah Ruddick as well as Carol Gilligan talk of the idea of maternal thinking. The idea that moral reasoning based on women's experiences and what women consider important is also necessary. This, this focus on difference therefore helped bring into fold many other issues which were not as relevant to political theory as before. Therefore, the advent of ecofeminism may actually be a result of the start of second wave feminism. The third wave feminism now talked about various other schools of thought as well. Here, for the first time, the idea of a universal sisterhood was talked about. The idea that the third wave feminists talked about was that women have been victims of patriarchy all over the world. This common idea of victimhood therefore joined them together in a movement that required solidarity. The idea that despite differences, women together should form a coherent body and fight for their rights was important to third wave, third wave feminism. However, this idea again was challenged with the start of post-feminism. Post-feminism may be regarded as the latest wave in the feminist approach. Theorists such as Judith Butler have tried to uncover the idea of sex and gender within this approach. Here Judith Butler tries to talk about the idea of gender performity. Thus, you are not born with a gender, but the roles that you perform are culturally and socially manifested and assimilated by women. This idea of post-feminism was more in touch with post-modernism too. Thus, feminism we see, despite different ideological stances, revolves around certain common elements. The most important of this element is the attack on patriarchy. Further, it does not only revolve around empowerment of women and ensuring women's rights only, but also to try, try to break down notions of masculinity as well. For feminists realize that both men and women have been victims of this idea of patriarchal structure existing in the society. Furthermore, feminism also tries to break down the idea of sexuality and make it more holistic in its approach. Feminism therefore tries to bring into fore the different voices that have erstwhile been ignored in the study of political theory. With the different issues such as marital rape, domestic violence, women harassment, etc. becoming a mainstay for the conversation in social media as well as popular media, feminism becomes extremely relevant to the idea of political theory. Political theory in moving towards anti-foundationalism requires feminism and the radical thought that it brings to fore. The idea of gender is extremely important in understanding the notion of political theory. For the breakdown of the notion of identities, it is necessary to talk about feminism and to study the feminist approach to political theory to learn more about the subject of political science. Thank you.